and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all ages, my name is David Popovich, aka The Bookworm, and welcome to Bookworm's Goosebumps Retrospective. Today, we look at the sequel to one of Goosebumps' most infamous books, with number 36, The Haunted Mask 2. The story takes place one year after the first book as we follow Steve Boswell. He's not having a good time having to coach the first grade soccer team as punishment for a school prank. The kids to him are little devils, always finding new ways to torture Steve. With Halloween coming up, he wants to get a mask like Carly Beth had last year to scare them. I knew that buying a really gross and frightening mask would instantly cheer me up. Then I could go ahead with my plan to terrify the hogs to get my revenge. Revenge. What a beautiful word. He gets one of a creepy old man from the same store, but when he puts it on, the mask becomes his face and he starts to feel like an old man. The cover is okay, but it doesn't have the same terror you get from the haunted mask. I get not trying to repeat yourself, and to be fair, I love this mask design. It's green skin, the piece of ripped flesh, the single whole tooth, the spiders, the many, many spiders, and how unnatural it is juxtaposed on the kid's body. It's just a case of trying to live up to your predecessor and being unable to reach it. I mean, seriously, there was no way you could top that. Also, what the hell happened to your head? New face, old nightmare. And speaking of living up to your predecessor, I will say this is one of the better Goosebumps sequels of the ones I've covered. Haunted Mask 2 does enough to difference itself from the first, but still remembers its internal mythology. For the most part. It's still better than Amnesia Blood. Steve isn't as likable as Carly Beth was. He was the bully from the last book. But seeing how the first graders torture him, and I mean that literally, we can at least sympathize with him. So it would make sense that he would want to have a mask like Carly Beth, no matter what she tells him. There was something totally weird about the mask. It wasn't just a mask. It came alive. It clamped onto my head, and I couldn't get it off. The mask was haunted or something. I also have to give credit to showcasing more of the creepy mask. Some of the designs described to us were vivid and unique, as well as showing that each mask has a different effect, like Majora's Mask. When you see Steve put on the old man mask, it has the effect of making him feel like an old man. It makes you wonder a bit what the other mask can do. I suddenly felt so tired. So weak. So totally weak. Every breath was a struggle. I bent over. My body began to tremble. I felt so weak. And old. Old. Which turns into a different adventure that is fairly enjoyable. However, what doesn't work as well is the ending. It's not the same as from the first book. They even try and fail at what they did the last time. But what we get is really confusing. It didn't make much sense from what was explained in the first book, and like others, it just happens and boom! Problem solved! Just your standard deus ex machina, add a predictable twist, and you have a pretty bland ending. Also, on a different note, what happened to Carly Beth's brother from the last book? He is never mentioned and never appears. He disappears like Chuck from Happy Days. I know it's not the main focus of the story, in fact he's nowhere at all, but if you have read the ending of the first book, that doesn't leave you with happy thoughts. Overall, The Haunted Mask 2 is a valiant effort. It does something different with a similar premise, but the ending doesn't leave you too satisfied. One of the better Goosebumps sequels, but it's just an okay book compared to the rest of the series. What about you, Internet? What's your opinion about The Haunted Mask 2? Till next time, have a scary day. <laughs>